I don't care. I mean, I just think something that needs to be tied together somehow or it'll play the wrong and broke again. Um, that way, if it's that way, she won. She won. She won. But, you know, we're going to make a lot of people have to get a letter or something saying they don't want to have the rent fixed. So, you know, you can't never make anybody happy. You know, I, was, I was thinking like, you know, two, but, uh, uh, but, but I'm also, but one also by fours or two by fours or two by sixes. You're doing you know, it in a couple of kids. Yeah, 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 that's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. You know, well, you put something that big under it and it'll add so much extra weight. That's probably nobody will move it anyway. It's too bad for the two of us. No, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's exactly how those legs get broke. You know, they, they're sliding out of the bricks and their bricks aren't perfectly balanced. At least that's what I figured out. Like, uh, Okay, I'm going to call this meeting in order. Okay, okay, thanks. And I'll call one. Okay, we'll save it all. Okay. I pledge it to you to be the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Okay, I'm going to open it to public comment. Yeah. My name is Mary Goldhair, and this is the uh, Tottenham and Beauty Development Association here at the last uh, 7th um, annual meeting. And we had a very nice turnout uh, from people who were very responsive and excited to hear Rachel's report about street food. And they were also very excited to hear about the uh, plan for Block 5, which I guess the working title is Spirit Park. And Jane encouraged everybody to go uh, see Ernie and congratulate him on his, um, on his plan. So uh, it was a wonderful morning. It was a beautiful day, and I was grateful to have such a big crowd come to the meeting. So. Great. Thanks, Mary. <coughs> Bob Snyder. Uh, as probably everybody knows, we live down next to the boat launch. And yesterday, several people came by, different construction companies, looking at uh, the launch to see what it took to put it in. Uh, and from looking at their drawings, you know, I had to look over their shoulders to see what they were proposing. But several things. They really didn't know where the launch was going in. They knew approximately, but they didn't have it uh, spiked out. Correct. Uh, you know, there was no marker saying it was going to be here or there. The other thing is, 
there was, uh, in the bid, there was for a lot of asphalt, and they didn't know where the asphalt was going to go in that driveway. And so uh, I'm concerned, because we live right next to it, that if you put the ramp in, there's no place to put the dock next to it. And in a lot of places, they have put the dock onto the ramp itself, drilled holes in the concrete, and set the dock into it. And you know, it, that seems like the logical way of doing it there, because as you know, the dock's been knocked down three times already this season. So we need to stabilize the dock. And the only way you can stabilize that is to put the posts directly into the concrete so they can't be wiggled around. So, uh, but none of these people knew anything about it. They didn't care where the dock was going. They were just looking at bidding the ramp. So uh, I hope that you take all this under advisement so that you don't impact us. You give the township what you need, which is a really good boat ramp with uh, good dock access, because that dock is very important to them. Uh, that's what people go out to get in their boats on. So you need the dock and you need the new ramp, but you need to do it in the best possible manner. So, uh, and I'd be very happy to give my insights going forward. According to the, uh, the guys there, uh, they had to have the bids in by yesterday. So, uh, I don't know who they had to have them in, you or the no, to the road commission. road commission. And they were saying that they had to have the job done by the end of September. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is, they're going to tear it up in the summer and you're going to make a lot of people unhappy if you have it tore up for a week or two and they can't use it. So I know. it would have been better to do well, it. Well, we couldn't do it in the spring because it took three months to get yeah. DEQ approval. But you could do it in late September, early October and still uh, not impact the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I'll talk to my broker. So I'd like to add something. Yeah. Uh, my name is Penny Catch and I'm Bob Snyder's wife. Um, I, just two things. We did submit our comments to the DEQ per the public notice requirements. And I'd like to reiterate one of them is that I would just like for someone to pay attention to that really large willow and ensure that when they're bulldozing into the area to make the ramp larger that there's uh, the least amount of damage to the root system of that tree. We think it's 75 years old. Mm -hmm. And it just seems likely that when they're digging in there that there's going to be permanent damage to the tree. Secondly, um, one of the guys yesterday said that he was going to propose that they take out the turnaround um, and just asphalt the whole thing. I just want to say that we think that's a really bad idea and I'm sure most of the users would think it is because it's that green circle in the middle that keeps the traffic going in a coordinated way. So not only would we lose the greenness of that one spot, but it would be chaos if there's no green circle. And they are looking at doing that. They're, they are. They're trying to make better access and better back end, and they're trying to move the, tele, the pole, telephone pole. Yeah, it would be fine to lose the telephone pole. But yeah. Seriously, if you sit there and watch, the circle it works. Keeps the traffic mm -hmm. moving in the maximum efficiency. Mm -hmm. the pad in there, as well, you know. I'll talk to, to Mike, but I know that that's <clears throat> an area that they have a lot of concern for parking and the way people are backing in and all kinds of things. So Right. You won't, well, if they'd like to come and stand and watch, it won't make any increase in the amount of traffic to eliminate the circle. There won't be any new parking. Places. And it won't add any parking. Okay, great. Yeah. Good evening. My, my name is Fred Osborne. I'm superintendent in the Lake Schools. I wanted to um, communicate a few things that are happening at the school in regards to the violence coming up on August 5th. Um, the Citizens Committee charged the board and myself with doing a facility study out of a strategic plan a couple years ago. So they wanted us to take a look at what our needs are, prioritize those, evaluate the costs, and make a recommendation how do we move forward. Through that process, they identified really four areas of needed improvement, safety, energy, facilities, and technology. Um, if you went to school at New Lakes, you probably use the same bathrooms that uh, are still there. The building was built in 1952, and we're still using the same bathrooms. Uh, they're 
not handicapped accessible, and there's a lot of issues with the plumbing. It's about $100,000 to gut one bathroom and to redo it, so it's pretty pricey. Just give you a couple of examples. The, um, the carpeting in all of the classrooms throughout the middle school, high school complex was put in in 1989. It's 25 years old and it's way past its, um, its prime. Windows were put in the 70s, they've lost their seals, they're clouded, we need to replace those, not only for energy, but also for aesthetics. Um, I could keep going, there's a huge list of, uh, of needs that we have. The last bond that was passed in the, in the community was 18 years ago to build elementary school. It is our newest building, it's our pride and joy, but at the same time it has an asphalt roof on it. To replace the roof and it's close to its expected age, uh, it's about $300,000 putting a roof on that building. So, uh, the board has been very um, good about trying to keep the cuts away from the classroom and make sure we keep our class sizes where they need to be, but unfortunately it's been at the expense of maintaining our facilities. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that that I could go into, but primarily it's just not enough money to do what needs to be done. It's common, uh, it didn't used to be common to go to the community to ask for the kind of money that we're asking for to do improvements, but it's become common uh, in the state because of the money that's coming out of Lansing. Security is another big thing we want to, um, you know, we built schools back, even the one that was built 18 years ago, it was walk in and have direct access in every direction as quickly as possible to um, visit the classrooms and see the kids, and we don't, we don't want that now. Now we want controlled entry where we can actually buzz people in and make sure that we're keeping our kids as safe as possible, and that's expensive as well. So lots of uh, changes on the um, proposal. The bond is actually asking for a 10-year term, uh, $8.1 million, which would equate to a slight increase over what our community members are currently playing, paying would also be an extension. Our current bond that was passed 18 years ago expires in two years. So we'd be extending it eight years longer and it would be increasing it on an average of about 0.8 pounds. Uh, that equates to, um, and I have a handout to, to refer that you can look at, but it equates to about uh, a gallon of gas a month is what it amounts to. Three dollars and, well on a good day, three, 370, so on a good day, a gallon of gas. Um, I want to leave these with you and make them available to the public if you choose to uh, disseminate these, but it does go over some of the projects, what, what we're trying to accomplish, what the costs are to the community, and um, some information if you have further questions where you can go to get some of those answered. Great. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Fred? Okay, great. Fred, thanks. Any other? Uh, I just had a couple comments. Uh, I know there's still ongoing uh, construction-related issues being finished up on the park, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's two young trees that are died. Uh, there's one oak tree that looks to have probably been root-killed uh, with construction last year over by the swings. And then uh, I see Amanda and her, I guess it's her boyfriend, down today digging rocks out of the beach and piling them around the end of the sidewalk down there. And we lost about six foot of beach over winter. So where the ADA access was last year, that's all piled with rocks now. So I'm not sure how this new ADA ramp will access the lake for people. Uh, my real question though is, is a safety issue. Uh, this climbing wall that's adjacent to the playground, I'm not sure if anybody envisioned the issues that would be there, but these photos were taken today. The first one is the young fella just getting ready to do a backflip off that nine foot tall wall. This is him landing down here. This is the impact by the slide so you can see how far out from the wall it is. This is from the terraces by the flowers with two guys backflipping off there onto the beach. And then this one, last one, from last summer with younger children climbing up that nine foot wall and then having to go along between the wall and the fence which is supposed to be the protection from going over the wall. Uh, I checked the, uh, the plans and your, uh, your, your fall zone, those wood chips are ready for a nine, are ready for an eight foot fall. Now, I think some people have confusion. That doesn't mean that you're gonna fall eight foot and not hurt yourself. That means you're gonna fall eight foot and hopefully not kill yourself. And do you have a proposal of what we should do? Uh, 
No, I'll leave that up to the people that designed it. I just wondered, you know, you. I'm not sure how you would limit access to it. <laughs> Obviously, you cannot put signs say "Don't climb on the wall." <laughs> but I do want you to be aware that it is a very real safety hazard to put anything like that adjacent to a play area where children are playing unsupervised. I've seen very young children crawling up it. A lot of other people told me they've seen people crawling up it. Uh, I'm not sure if it could be, I don't think there's, uh, nobody rates uh, safe fall zones for more than eight feet that I'm aware of. And that's based on, they take a, a metal ball that has sensors in it that act like our brain and drop it to the ground and see if it would be a life threatening injury. <clears throat> so uh, these guys today, and I'll, I'll send you all some color pictures to show it a little better, but he, he made multiple backflips off the top of that wall. And did you stop him? Did no. you make any comment to him? Is it my job? No, I just wondered if you were so Is it my concerned job? about safety that you might have said something. Well, I was concerned about safety last week when the bathrooms were filthy and I reported to the district health department. Yeah, and he called me about that. And okay, said that well, and you saw the pictures, I'm sure. I did, and it's no and different that's a safety than every issue. issue we've had with the bathrooms, by the way. We've, we've been working on those bathrooms, so whoever's going in there and... Well, I see that is another, that's another public safety issue. Yeah, well, fine. And I mean, there's no point in spending hundreds of thousands of dollars here to improve our community if the facilities look like that when somebody comes to visit, because all they'll remember is the kid falling off a wall or dirty bathrooms. I feel the same way about the bathrooms. But I think if you saw a kid falling off a wall, I think I would, as a citizen, ask you to please in the next time not worry about so much about the pictures, but please tell them to stop. Yeah. That would be very helpful. <laughs> okay, any other public comment? Okay, great. Um, let's have the minutes, approval of the minutes of the June 3rd meeting at the East Mullet Township Hall. Make a motion to approve the minutes unless someone has some corrections. I might have some corrections. I'm just trying to get through it all here. the second to the last paragraph on the first page. Dennis Dabrowski made a motion to have Paul Lugaski of Waitrim approve the best company with the lowest bid. Um, I'm not satisfied with the word the best company. Usually it's um, a, a qualified bidder. So I, I, I'm just not happy with the word best company. And then provided Paul Rapaski is comfortable with the bid. I don't care if Paul's comfortable with it or not. But if he gives us his recommendations, is all I want. I listened to the tape a couple times. That's what we said. So I don't have the tape. Yeah, I listened to the tape. Went back and listened to it twice. That's what we said. Well, I like but to hand. Wait, but you can change that. Um, I don't it's, know. The, it's the best qualified I can add that company in there. The could lowest you, qualified could you bidder. Just add the, I could the best just qualified add bidder. But qualified. what if the words the best was removed? Yeah, just pretty qualified. Wait, it's Trim approved even company the with the lowest bid. bid. It's not even the lowest bid. It's so that was qualified. the motion. Mm -hmm. But that was the motion. Yeah, I, I went back and listened to it twice. Yeah, there was the motion. But if you want qualified added in I would there, like qualified. Um, I would like that. I think it's important we put qualified. Well, yeah. I think the I think the issue isn't so much in the minutes. It's going to be the minutes of this meeting. I mean, I, I understand what you said. If she's listened to the tapes, then she has to report what she heard. We can't change the wording right. if the if the words were what were said. So the, the purpose of the minutes, I understand what you're saying, Kathy. So yeah, I do too. But I thought but I, 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 don't but have I thought a I read it with someone else said it said competent. Now it says best company. I mean, I'm not sure how many times we're changing the words on it. Did you change the words before, mm -hmm. Rachel, or is this? No, uh, I put it down. I wrote it, and then I went back and I listened to it, and uh, I was wrong when I did my rough copy, so I changed it so it would be. What was said. Okay. That's well, my then. duty is to report what was said. So I, you know, I, I'm not, 
I don't have a problem with her wanting to add that, but I, it's after the fact. So I, you know, it's up to Mary Ann if she wants to add it. Fine. Well, that's not the purpose of minutes. The purpose of minutes is to report what right. was said at the meeting, right. not to add things to it. I, I, I totally agree with Kathy that had we known what we know now, we wouldn't have even written it this way. But I, I, I would have a hard time changing if she's listened to the tape. If it's on the tape that way, um, I will accept that. It was a very vague motion. Does anybody else have any thoughts about yeah, it? Well, know. I think the minutes must reflect what the motion was. Yeah, if yeah. that's what was on the tape, we have to go by that's that. That's right. Okay. But we will talk about that so we can get that the process corrected. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Well, then we don't want to add the word qualified. We're not adding anything. We're All right. Well, then I'm going to take that off. Motion to approve the minutes as written. Is there a second to that motion? I'll support it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Are you Motion passes. Them? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Treasurer's report? Okay. Treasurer's report, June 30th, 2014. General accounts checking 29,982.63. Savings, 200. $26,296.25. The fire fund, $372,604. Library fund, $47,979. Light fund, $36,378. Liquor fund, $176. Um, donation, $1,508. Tax savings, a dollar. Checking, a dollar. Investments and the securities, 77,614. The fire CDs, 124,731. Uh, dedicated accounts, uh, the old schoolhouse, 136,999. Township parking lots, $76,067. And hall renovation savings, 30,951. Okay. Kathy, would you repeat the fire fund number that you had, please? Fire fund savings? Yes. Oh, yeah, the third line. 372,604. Thank, thank you. Okay, can we um, put that into the minutes as, as read? Okay. Um, Treasures uh, expense report for the first quarter. Mullet um, Township expense report for the first quarter of fiscal year 2014 2015. The general fund 101 spent $73,673.48. The fire fund spent $21,270.72. Liquor fund spent $158.36. The street light fund spent $2,914.79, and the library fund spent $8,043.01, a total for the first quarter of $106,160.36. Okay, great. We'll put those into the minutes. Okay, um, the Sutherland property. Um, I got a, a a note from, I, I want to table this, but I just want to give you some input. I got a, um, a note from Tim tonight. He has been dealing with the um, road commission on getting um, some kind of a paper from the road commission that would grant Mullet Township the rights to Sutherland property. Um, he would like, he's, his thing is until he gets the right uh, document done he thinks we should table this for another meeting and he said he'd have it done next meeting so we're going to table the Sutherland discussion until we have all the pro all the uh, paperwork done and, and we have the uh, road commission um, on board with us the next issue is um, we got a letter from the 
Road Commission on seal coating costs finally for Chapman, Patterson, and Sutherland. That would be, and I think you all have that in your, does everybody have that in their packets? No. Oh, you didn't put it in the packet? No, I didn't get it. Yeah, you may. How did it come? Did it come by email? No, I gave it, I, you've got two of them. You've got one from the, well, unless it's attached to this, is it? No, that's okay. You can give me that. It's right here. You gave me the, you gave me all the copies. Oh, I gave you the original. Yeah, let me just read it. Yeah, I didn't keep a copy. Early this year, we took bids for seal coating materials, equipment, and labor. The estimated cost to single seal Chapman, Patterson, and Sutherland. I've also included an agreement if your township so chooses to move forward. Now, if I'm right, Rachel, we two years ago paid, already paid. Yeah, don't I have a note on there? Yeah, you said we have a check for $211.73. Which was 2% at the time. Right. This is for $5,632.75. What happened? Well, because part of the road is now paved. Oh, okay. Remember that? Okay. That's probably why. Yeah. And the estimated completion date would be September 19th, 2014. So, do we want to seal those roads now, which we've been waiting for two years to do? Or are you going to have a contractor in to do it? He doesn't say in this if they're going to do it. The road commission will prepare and execute all specifications. Oh, it must be. All specification, bid documents, construction contracts, and all engineering services. Township share the cost will be paid to the road commission as follows. Township will pay 50% when the job starts remain 50%. So, I'm assuming they are having somebody do it. Because this, remember when we talked to him last, they had to get somebody from another. Right. I think it was Emmett County. They were trying to partner with Emmett County to do it. And then they were going to go down state to find a construction company. And I assume that that's what they must have done. I didn't talk to Mike about this. Yeah, we just got this. So, my personal feeling is I think we should move forward with it. I mean, we've been... Right. I mean, it's all about maintaining the roads in a good state of repair. So, can I have a motion to... I'll make a motion that we move forward on that. I guess we motioned... Well, yeah, it's true. It was approved. About two years ago, right? It was approved two years ago. Yeah, we motioned it two years ago. So, it's a work in progress. Okay, thanks. Then I just sign it and we'll give it to you and you'll handle it. Don't need a motion. It's a work in progress. I wouldn't have paid the 2% if it wasn't a motion. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's easy. That's a good one. Let's do it. Okay, now we have the next one is the swim buoys. Rachel, I think this is your next. Oh, yeah. I ran around and got copies of pricing. Pricing hasn't changed since last year. They're holding the pricing at $376.50 each, which comes to $2,259. They offered rope with floats, but I don't know if we want to get into that or not. Then there was the... I went to Sheboygan Cement, and those are $11.85 for these big 250-pound cement things that you put in the water with an eye. We'd have to find out how big the eye is so we can get the correct chain. I'm sorry. And they have those in stock. They're $11.85. The chain, I guess, of $269 a foot at Dewitt Center, but we probably... No, they didn't have that at Michigan Lake Products. Dewitt Center, do they not? Well, I went to Michigan Lake Products to get the chain because I thought I was supposed to get the chain. I was there quite a while back, and they didn't offer it to me. He's getting... 
I told him to order a bucket of chain because we, and I, he was yeah. giving me the price. Okay, well then that could come off. Yeah, we can take that off. But um, I haven't heard from him, so I'll, I'll call him tomorrow and just double check on what he's got for the chain. But he, I thought you told me, you told me three eighths inch. You talked to him, right? When you were in the I said the size of chain, chain should, is three should be three Yeah, eight. the right. size of the chain is going to be critical to match the eye on the cement base. So that was what I was waiting for, was to see that cement base to make sure that the chain would fit there. However, you can use a captive, you can use a captive uh, bolt too. There's yeah. another way to do it. Well, There's several we, ways to do we it. We ordered three eighths inch. Um, oh, it's three eighths? Mm -hmm. And he was going to cut it in 10 foot length. That sounds about right. I looked at. Yeah. I'm sure that'll work, but I'll check with Shibuya and see that before we get these. If this goes through, before we get the cement pads, make sure it works. Jesus. Sorry. I've got a, a daughter that's having a baby. <laughs> Waiting for her. Well, that's not her, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, but any day now, so we're just <laughs> on edge. On edge. Um, okay, so what do we want to do with this, Rachel? We want to just. Well, I'd like to just get the swim buoys on order. I'm waiting for DNR, which I was told last week.